This may look like a measuring tape, but it is in fact a random wire antenna. I learned about random wire antennas from Random Wire on Instagram. You should check out his page. And Random Wire, when I make a million bucks from this channel, I'll buy you a beer because Kamala will be in office by then, and that is how much a beer will cost. I realized while I was out on the fires this year that I needed a faster way to bring in my antenna because my primary job on these incidents is not to play with radios, but in fact to provide medical services for the people actually engaged in fire suppression activities. And what is faster than a metal measuring tape reeling in at Mach 5, whipping off fingers and arms and legs along the way? Not many things. Now I found a website indicating that 41 feet is a really good length to use for a random wire antenna, and I found this 40 foot measuring tape on Amazon. I'll need to connect that to this 1 to 9 LDG on on the positive side. And I think I'll get to 41 feet by using a one foot chunk of this scrap of solid core wire that I used to use for shortwave listening. Finally, I'll convert this UHF connector on the Anun to BNC with this adapter so that it works with my stuff. So let's see what kind of damage we can do. So I think if I bend this a little bit, we can feed it through the top here out this little hole down here on the bottom. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Let's just get this thing the hell off of here. And first try. All right, what I think I want to do is pull this measuring tape out to 40 feet and then I'll drill a hole into it so that I can clip into it with this carabiner. And that is how I will connect the measuring tape to this on on and so I just so happen to have a measuring tape here I can measure out one foot of wire plus carabiner so let's give that a shot right about here where the post starts and the carabiner is about two and a half inches long I will bend it right here let's see what that gets us roughly one foot cool close enough. Now you might be wondering what goes on the negative side and that is where your counterpoise would go here. It's got the ground symbol. I don't know if I'll need one though. I think I'm using enough coax, probably about 20 feet of RG58. And so we're going to see if we can get away without needing another wire for a counterpoise. So mistakes were made. That's okay though. It gave me an opportunity to figure out all the wrong ways to do this. It turns out the winning technique is simply to use a single hole punch and that leaves a nice clean hole in this measuring tape steel, which is not at all the easiest material to work with. So this measuring tape is trash. I ordered a new one and it'll be here next week. In the meantime, I think this will still work for testing purposes. Let's throw it up in the tree and we can connect it to my Nano VNA and check out the SWR. As you can see from these tests, the SWR was just fine on all of the HF bands that I care to talk on. It was three to one or less, and it really loved 20 meter. This antenna is gonna do just fine when paired with an antenna tuner, which is normal for a random wire antenna. Now I did encounter one issue. Anytime the wind would blow, even slightly, 
the SWR would go crazy and the antenna would start having problems. And I believe this was a faulty design of the way I had the on-on connected to the measuring tape with the wire and the carabiner through the hole. I think that's just a bad design. So I went back to the drawing board and I came up with something new. So here's the new and improved random tape measure antenna. Now I did away with that solid core wire that was kind of problematic. I had initially thought that that would need to be load bearing, but then I realized, check that out, the holes on the un, -un meet precisely with the holes on the measuring tape body. So I got some number six machine screws and I sunk those in there. This one was kind of a pain because you can't really access that hole through the connector very well. So I just had to grind that in with vice grips, but it worked out. And then I replaced that wire with a 14 gauge stranded wire, one foot of it. And instead of that problematic carabiner, an alligator clip. So there are a number of lengths on a random wire antenna that will work. And so you just pull this out to whatever length you want. And then I took some sandpaper and rubbed the paint off of this and lock that down. You just take the alligator clip, clamp it right onto whatever length you want. And I think it's gonna work just fine. Now one observation, this is a really heavy antenna. I really wouldn't wanna pack this around, but I think just for putting it in my case over there, it'll work just fine. I also figured out a clever way to feed it up over a tree branch and then suck it back in real quick. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. So I think what we're going to do now is string this back up and see if we can make a real contact on WinLink and JSA call. Well, I was able to tune this antenna to an SWR at the transceiver of 1.25 to 1, and I'm sending out a heartbeat now, and we'll see who can hear us. But we're hearing others, even if they're not hearing me. Hey, we actually got somebody. Took three heartbeats, but... That was awesome. All right, we're going to try K7 UNI. I believe they are in Northeast Oregon. All right, no worries. Let's try my old fallback W7 OWO in Yamhill. Or not. Looks like somebody doing packet. How about Olympia? That ain't happening either. All right, Canada, you're up next. Okay, AG7MM is free. He's somewhere down in southern Idaho. Oh, classy. Okay, how about the Nuke Lab? Yes! Thank you, Idaho National Laboratory. We are talking to you with a tape measure from 190 miles away. Yeah, that figures. Well, talking to a nuclear laboratory on a measuring tape is by far one of the silliest things I've ever done, but it obviously worked, and I think in the spirit of science and experimentation, those guys would probably think it's pretty cool too down there at the Nuke Lab. Before we go, I'd like to say a word about another great experimenter who left us over this past week, and that was Paul Harrell. He passed away of pancreatic cancer, and if you haven't heard the details yet, cruise on over to his channel. His family posted a video on his behalf titled, I'm Dead, which is morbidly hilarious, but seems fitting with his character. Paul was famous for taking various shooting concepts and various aspects of FUD lore. He would spend his own time, money, and effort going out into the woods and testing them. And one of the things I really appreciated about Paul was his ability to communicate the results of his experiments back to us in a really quick speaking cadence. It's something that I try to emulate whenever I have the energy to, but I fail miserably at it. I usually take about 70 takes to get through something without saying, um, but Paul seemed to do it flawlessly and effortlessly. And so I'm going to really miss Paul. I am happy to see that his family is taking up his channel and they're going to continue on his legacy of experimentation and sharing the results of those experiments. And I'm really excited to see where they take that channel.